What's going on YouTube? Josh here checking in. Back with some more training footage. You'll see here some sumo deadlifting. You'll see three sets of five at 455. This first set, well, went very, very well. I was really happy with it. My form overall was pretty good, I thought. Uh, the speed was pretty good as well. And it wasn't all that bad. I probably had maybe another three or four reps. Maybe even more if I really was pushing it. Um, but that was really solid, I was very happy with that. This is definitely a volume PR for me, and something I was uh, really happy with because basically I have really haven't been able to get back to my strength levels that I was at before uh, my sartorius muscle tear. I was taking some time, recovering, etc. Uh, so, you know, the weight isn't really all that heavy, but right now I'm just working on building up my base of strength again, that way I can prepare to actually get strong again. Uh, so over here you'll see I took some time to show you guys the setup. You'll notice a lot of people who sumo deadlift, they kind of do that thing that I just did where you get your feet set, you're the appropriate distance away from the bar, which shouldn't be all that far, it should be quite close. Um, you know, the feet externally rotated at the appropriate angle and making sure that my setup with my arms are the appropriate distance, etc. is all perfect. Um, you know, the sumo deadlift just as almost all the other lifts, it's really important that you focus on that setup because if you fail to prioritize that, basically the rest of the lift is doomed. So that's a, a major um, tip, especially you know when you start lifting heavier weights, you really need to respect that setup, um, which will definitely help you longer term with your form. After this, we moved on to some squats. Uh, I did four sets of seven. Um, Definitely nothing too crazy as far as the weight's concerned. Just again building up my strength. You'll notice here that I am wearing the SBD knee sleeves. Uh, this is my first time squatting in them. I just got them. I hopped on the bandwagon, you could say. It was basically just because my Ray-Bans have had them for a while. They were feeling kind of loose, like they weren't really doing much. Um, and everybody's been raving about these SBD sleeves. I mean, everybody has them. All the top power lifters uh, use them. So I figured I would find out what all the hype is about. And I would say definitely at 90 bucks they are worth it. Um, you know, they definitely feel much tighter, they feel like they actually do their job. And you know, you actually don't even realize that they're there, which is really nice. They they kind of just become like a second skin almost. Um, they feel like they, you know, keep your knees obviously nice and warm, nice and compressed. Whether or not they add weight to your squat. I would say is still debatable. They almost feel that way, but it's not clear if it's because they're applying kind of compression like you'd see in a knee wrap, or is it just because they feel so good that you kind of feel extra confident and you drop them to the hole a little bit more comfortably. I am not sure. Uh, so you might also notice that I threw on a belt. Basically I haven't worn a belt in probably, I would say about four months now in my, into my training. It's probably been about three or four months since I've touched a belt. Um, and basically the reason I decided to start squatting again with the belt is for a few factors. I feel much more comfortable squatting with the belt. Um, my progress was definitely a little bit slow recovering from my injury uh, without a belt and I feel like I can definitely progress much quicker with one. Um, what else? That's pretty much it. I just feel a lot more comfortable with it. And also now that I'm training uh, with a greater frequency, I'm now training three days a week. Uh, lower body three days, upper body three days, uh, my lower back is definitely feeling taxed. So it just kind of helps me kind of alleviate some of that fatigue that was developing from all the beltless squatting and beltless deadlifting that I just was unable to really fully recover from. I mean, maybe in a perfect world I would have tried to stay beltless for a little bit longer, uh, but I don't really have the ideal recovery right now uh, due to my school schedule. I am definitely not getting an ideal amount of sleep. I probably get maybe six hours of sleep. Seven is a really good day, uh, but in reality, I, I need closer to eight or nine given my uh, training schedule. So, uh, just to speak a little bit more about my training right now, like I mentioned, I'm just working to build up back my base of strength. Uh, so, kind of developing my foundation again that I basically lost as a result of taking it easy slash taking it off um, from my injury that I had. So uh, to do that, I'm basically working out six days a week, like I've already mentioned, 
As you can tell from this video and my other recent training videos, the reps are not really going anywhere too low. Um, since I'm trying to build back up my strength, I'm keeping the rep range pretty moderate. For my primary movements, I'm staying basically between 4 to 6, and for my accessories, I'm doing basically 8 to 12, more or less. Um, basically following some kind of auto-regulation at this point, and I'll probably get back to my standard linear periodization approach in the coming weeks, probably about 3 or 4 weeks from now. So just to get back to the video real quick, these are obviously glute ham rays, and I must say you have to respect this movement. You'll see my face there, these are quite hard, uh, this is my last set, and um, definitely will say that these are an excellent movement for your hamstrings. So anyway guys, I'll leave you with that. I hope you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a like, if you're not a subscriber already, hit that subscribe button. Catch you guys later.